Hello everybody and welcome back to Sustainable Small Holding France. Today we're going to talk in this video about agricultural occupancy conditions, also known as AOCs or agricultural ties. Now, these are planning conditions which are applied to and are attached to any dwelling with a agricultural occupancy condition placed upon it by the local authority when planning permission was first granted for that property. Now, if you've been looking for a small holding to buy and you've noticed that properties with AOCs on them are at least a third cheaper than what they would normally be on the open market, there is a reason for this. And I am going to try to explain this now. When the Second World War finished, the government decided that it was a good idea to, number one, safeguard the countryside, and number two, provide affordable housing for farm workers by making it a provision that any house, any dwelling built in the countryside must have an agricultural occupancy condition attached to it. This was to prevent houses being built willy-nilly on the green belt and to prevent uh, rich people from buying a plot of land in the countryside and just shoving houses on it anywhere and everywhere. So what is an agricultural occupancy condition? Well, it is a legal condition placed on a dwelling and sometimes just on land to prevent that house or dwelling or land being occupied by a person who is not mainly or solely working in agriculture, horticulture or forestry. Now, there is a specific wording usually. Every local authority has a slightly different format, but I'll just read out what I have. The occupation of the dwelling shall be limited to a person solely or mainly employed or last employed locally in agriculture, forestry or horticulture or the widow or widower of such a person. Now, the local aspect of that can vary. Uh, we bought an agricultural tied property in Cornwall and our local um condition said must be working within the parish or within an adjoining parish. Now, um, some of the agricultural occupancy conditions that were granted when planning was granted on a particular dwelling are actually tied to a specific farm. You need to read and understand what an agricultural occupancy condition really means. Now, um, there is a specific definition of what farming, what forestry and what horticultural practice means. So farming, uh, if you are a farm worker, if you are a farm labourer, that's fine, you comply. If you are uh, self-employed as a farmer yourself or on a sustainable small holding technically you comply but your local authority will ask you for a full business plan to support what you are stating is the fact um, if you work in a, a garden center you do not comply under horticulture Horticulture means growing things on your holding or growing things on a farm that you are employed on that is near to your holding. So be really, really careful. Uh, when I wrote this book, I have basically a whole chapter on agricultural planning agricultural occupancy conditions and many of the case studies in this book relate to that so it shows you a whole diversity of what can be achieved even with an agricultural occupancy condition imposed upon a dwelling now what else can i tell you how to live with it when we bought our agriculturally tied property in Cornwall, we started our business as a plant nursery. 
Now, despite the research that we did and the fact that I had industry expertise, because this is what I was trained in, we could not make enough money doing that alone to, uh, to live. So myself, my husband and my children, we could not afford to run as a plant nursery and we made a loss for three years. Now, thankfully, I've got some good friends and the chat amongst the group of friends was, why don't you, seeing since you have a small orchard on the site, make uh, some cider commercially and take advantage of the cider duty exemption. Now, we managed to scrape together some money and invest in that and we never looked back. Uh, John also started uh, work for himself as an agricultural machine servicing person. So he set up a business servicing and repairing agricultural machinery, which is a stretch of the definition, but still counted. So the information is there in uh, that book. If you want to read about how we personally manage to live and eventually lift the tie, you want this book, Living Off the Land, My Cornish Small Holding Dream. The links to the, both the books are in the comments underneath the video. Um, you can, as I've just said, have an agricultural tie removed. Now, there are two main ways of doing this. The first one is that you can have a marketing exercise, a market testing exercise. Now, this is fraught with difficulty. The idea is that you, apl you apply to your local authorities, agricultural valuer, who will then come out to see you and give you a market value of the property with the agricultural tie on it. Now, Bear in mind that he is not going to give you a high value for this property. Um, most agricultural type properties are marketed at a third less the usual going rate for a similar property in your area. So if a normal uh, bungalow with an acre of land was selling for £200,000, then an agricultural tie condition imposed upon that would be valued by your valuer at a third less. Now, this is great if you're buying and you can comply with the tie, but it's crap if you are trying to sell your property. And this is why most people try and lift the tie. Now, the marketing testing um exercise must be carried out for a minimum of two years and you have to prove that you have marketed your property through national and local newspapers and through a, a professional estate agent. Now this is difficult and uh, you will be living under an awful lot of stress because even though the whole object of the game for you is to try and show that no one is interested in buying your agriculturally tied property at that price and therefore, please, Mr. Local Authority, can I have the tie lifted? Someone like me will come along and make you a reasonable offer. Now, if you don't accept that reasonable offer, and it has to be a reasonable close to the price that you are asking offer, then the local authority can turn around and say, you've had a reasonable offer on that, you've refused it, uh, and we see that the market uh, testing exercise has been fulfilled and we're not granting your time, which is rubbish. Um, the other method of removing the tie is to apply again to the local authority for a CLUD. It is a CLEUD -E uh, certificate, a certificate of a certificate of lawful use or development. Sorry, it's been some time since we did this. Um, Basically, you make an application 
to have the agricultural tie lifted if you can prove that you have continually for more than 10 years broken the condition. You have breached the condition. Now, you will need information to be able to prove this, and it must be continually breached for 10 years. If the person who had the property before you breached it, you can include that. It has to start from when you breached the condition, and you need to mark this date in a diary, and you need to keep information to prove that. Now, the problem with this approach and it's really stressful, we did it, is that at any time during your tenure living at the property, if you are saying that you have breached that property, breached the condition whilst living there by working elsewhere, um, you could get an enforcement visit from your local authority, and he will want to know how you are fulfilling the terms of the agricultural tie. Now, if you lie, you have to start again at the beginning. If he finds out, if perhaps one of your neighbours or somebody locally has written in and complained that you are not fulfilling the terms of the tie and you get a visit, you're going to be in a bit of trouble. So an enforcement officer can inform can slap an enforcement notice on you, giving you 28 days to vacate the dwelling. Please, please, please be under no illusion. This is a serious thing. And I've spoken about this in this book, and there is lots of information online about enforcement notices. So it is not a thing to be undertaken lightly. There are companies out there who offer a no win, no fee. But the trouble is with a no win, no fee application, if it fails, if you have not got sufficient and clear information to prove that you have continually breached the condition for more than 10 years, then you have red flagged your dwelling and you're going to find it very difficult to continue on with that. That's all very depressing. But you can live with an agricultural tie. Now, um, there are ways of proving that you are uh, living with and, and working to the, the wording of the tie if you are careful. Now, I ran a small scale cider business from our small holding. It could be argued that this is not agriculture or horticulture and is in fact manufacturing. Now, I managed to circumvent that by using the phrase added value. <coughs> now, excuse me, uh, I was adding value to the crop of apples that I was growing on site by turning them into cider and juice. Now, this is acceptable. There are lots of other loopholes which you will need to investigate for yourself. Um, so the sky is the limit. The book, Sustainable Smallholding, has lots of case studies you can explore and have a think about uh, and see how you go on from there. Now, Agricultural occupancy conditions. Yes, you can find a property with one, and yes, it will be cheaper to buy when you start out on your good life journey. But be aware of what they entail uh, and how you are going to manage to do so. If you are buying land and you wish to build a property on that, you can apply to have an agricultural occupancy condition on that dwelling, on your land, but you will have to prepare a really thorough business plan. And I mean really thorough and take advice on that. There are companies who will help you do that. And then it's up to you to put in an application to your local authority to get permission. 
giving you a lot of things to think about there. So go away, browse my books uh, and see how you get on. Thanks for watching.